Hi, I'm Eric Stern. Welcome back to Jukebox Radio. This is Episode 7, Arabic Music Part 2. And what I played was Farid Alatrash's Hebina. Farid Alatrash is the same composer from last week. I thought I'd keep some things consistent around here. And this is an oud. Now, if you're from an Arabic country or from Turkey, you know exactly what this is. So this is more geared towards my Western audiences. And people in a restaurant, when I play, come up to me all the time and they say, what is that? Is that? And they guess, is it a mandolin? Uh, is it a balalaika? Is it a cello? My favorite question was, is it a French guitar? Da -da -dee 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 -dee. Is that a French guitar? Um, and I am happy that they ask. I never make them feel ashamed. I'm so glad that they go out and, and ask what it is. And I consider myself the, uh, the Portland ambassador of the Oud because I'm always out there playing in the park or the restaurant. And so I get to tell them an Oud uh, comes from the word uh, Arabic word for, for wood. Um, it has 11 strings, so we've got C, F, A, D, G, C. And I know what you're saying, that's not 11 strings. Well, uh, five of those, uh, or 10 of those strings are in pairs. So that's a pair of strings and they sound the same. And then the one on the bottom, uh, all by its lonesome, is, is sort of the drone string, and you can you can tune that up or down depending if you want. All right, um, some other things. There are these beautiful rosettes in them. Um, my grandmother's name was Rosetta, so I think of, of rosettes. There are no frets on the oud, that's right. And you'll see someone drew frets on these, the luthier, and, and sometimes that's the fashion to do, but there are actually no frets, and that becomes very important. Um, it's played with this, uh, long plectrum, Let's see if you can see it. It's called a risha, um, and it's made of of cow horn. Uh, and we, you know how how we know about it, or or what our relationship is to it. Um, so a long time ago, seven eleven. You can remember that date. Uh, that's when the Muslim Empire came into Spain, and in Spain for the next few hundred years there was a flowering of beautiful Arabic culture architecture, poetry, music, and in the city of Andalusia, they say, or the region of Andalusia, um, Jews, Christians, and Muslims all live together in harmony. Uh, that might be overstated whether they, how much harmony there was, but I do believe in a cosmopolitan setting and people rubbing shoulders against each other and all getting along anyway. There they were. Um, in fact, I'll play you a song from that period of time. It's called La Mabada. <laughs> beautiful words to it. That song is at least a thousand years old. Okay, so that's that's a that's an old song on the oud and and um so so when the Muslims left Spain, of course so much of the culture was extant there. They, it stayed there and, and still is. Um and so someone uh said, you know, hey Ahmed, what is that instrument you're playing? And Ahmed would say uh al the that's Arabic al oud al lut. Oh al lut Right, alud, alud. Uh, that's where our lute comes from. Um, you string a bunch of frets on it, and uh, and it becomes a kind of lute. And then the lute had its own development. All right. So, uh, what else can I tell you? Let's fast forward uh, many, many years. Let's fast forward to the 1900s, um, and I bet you know a song on the oud. Uh, I bet you've heard this before. Here we go. Yeah, let me try playing that again. Here we go. Remember the beginning of Pulp Fiction? 
fiction? Ooh. All right. Well, that is a, a song um, uh, that was a surf guitar song, right? Dick Dale. He was of Lebanese heritage, and he took a song called Miserlu, uh, which is a song, uh, a, a Greek song, Turkish song, Arab, Arabic song. Everybody sings it. The oud is in Greece, too, by the way. Um, so so he uh, he took that song, and he, he interpolated it, uh, or, you know, he made it a, a surf guitar version of that song. Wow. Okay. Um, what else? Well, let me say this uh, about Arabic music in general, because I cannot begin to describe uh, Arabic music in a very short YouTube video, right? I, I can't, I mean, I could give you sort of an overview, um, but, but it's as if I said, well, I'm going to make a 10 minute YouTube video on East, on, on sorry, on uh, uh, European music. Right. And you'd say, well, what do you mean by European music? I mean, there's do you mean from England, France, from what time period? You know, Italy, Spain, Germany. Um, same with Arabic music. There are so many different regions and, you know, dialects, as it were, of, of music. And it spans throughout history. So I can only give you some high points. So there's that Andalusia. And then there's the golden age of Arabic music when uh, Farid al wrote and the luminary Um Kulthum. She was an Egyptian singer, composer, oud player, and she was marvelous. Please go look her up. Um O U M K O L T H O U M Kulthum. And uh she she is the sine qua non of of Egyptian and Arabic music, right? And and she could sing. Her diction was amazing. Her case endings, her new nation, that's all Arabic stuff, but but trust me, she blew everybody away, and she still blows me away to this day. Look her up. Okay, so we'll get back to the oud, but quickly, I should say that I used a loop pedal, <laughs> and a loop pedal, you just press a press a pedal, and it repeats what you do. It, so it I, I did that so you could so get an idea of all the other instruments. So even though it looked like I was cheating when I wasn't playing, I was just using the loop pedal. Okay, this is a dumbek, right? And Arabic music, by the way, and Turkish music, Arabic and Turkish music are very intertwined, but we're really concentrating on Arabic music. Arabic music, there's a huge dance tradition with it, right? Um, in this country, you go and see some belly dance. Uh, Raks al Sharki is, is the more traditional name. So this is a dumbek, and here is a basic beat that you'll hear. If you want to dance at home, go ahead. So that beat was called the Belladi. Here's another beat. That's called a shift to telly. I played something called the Rick. All right, I'm kind of an average or advanced beginner drum player. I can't pretend otherwise. These things on the end are called zills, and belly dancers will dance with them. So, we talk, do you remember last week we talked about how this is a map of musical relationships? And the smallest increment between two notes, between uh, a white note and a black note, makes the theme to Jaws. Da -dum. Dum 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 dum, and we explored the possibility with the Arabic accordion that I played that we can get to even smaller increments. So go ahead and watch that video if you want, because what we realized is, for example, here between the E flat and the E, you could actually have a note. So this map of musical relationships is like a grid, right? And you and the and no matter what key you play in. All the musical relationships are the same. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. If you want to know more, look up some videos on equal temperament. Very interesting. But this 
is just a map that has not been around even that long. Um, and there have been other ways of playing music. We talked about that last week. There have been other maps. So, and to me, that map is like a city grid, right? You know, you, you're, you're on Chestnut Street and, and then you go uh, down 13th Street and you make a, a right. And then there's, there's you know, Walnut and Sansom um, and, um, oh my goodness. The neighborhood well anyway um so you go you go to these places and uh and but it's a grid right very straight very straight uh well in arabic music i think of it more like a meadow and i'll show you what i mean all right <laughs> That's a C. We're gonna play just a little bit of our major scale that we would have in the West. C, D, Do, a deer, a female deer, right? And by the way, you can play chords on the uh, oud. It's not usually done though. I got a pig, home on pen, corn to feed him on. All I want is a pretty little girl to feed him when I'm gone. Feed him when I'm gone. Doesn't sound that good. Uh, but you can play chords even though there are no frets. So uh, uh, getting back to architecture and meadows and all that, what the heck do I mean? Well, we have our major scale. We have that third note. And if we played those notes on a piano, a current piano, there's no, that's, that's just a grid. There's no way we can get out of that. There's no other place to go. But on an unfretted instrument, you can play pitches that are lower. That's a little bit lower, that third note. That's even lower, right? It's not, it's not E flat. It's not E. It's right in the middle. And therefore, I think of the oud and the musical relationship map like a meadow. Here we are walking one day, and there's a little hill in the meadow. That's that E. Uh, and But then it rains, and on another day, that hill's a little bit lower. Uh, that's a scale called rost, right? Well, not right. You might know that not know that at all. It's called rost. E's a little bit lower. The B is a little bit lower. So here it is all in context. Western uh, string players know all about this because they adjust their temperament just a little bit when they play with each other versus when they play with a piano. Um, but here it's really, it's, it's, it's not adjusting um, about equal temperament. It's, it's just these modes and scales. They're called macabres, and, and it's where you end up. So uh, that third note, uh, I know I'm belaboring it, but that third note, that... Um, E, E half flat, Sika, it's called when it's half flat. Well, that varies from region to region even. That, that note could be higher in Turkey or Syria and lower in Egypt. Okay, so here's another uh, mode or macam. Mode's not really the right word either. You just pretend you're in a meadow and you're walking around, you're looking for signposts. Well, here's that hill again, but now it's a little bit lower. It's that same note, but that E is much lower now. Still not an E flat. There's an E flat. Still not an E major. It's right in between. Here it comes. Now there's one macomb called Sabah, and it's even lower. And to me, Sabah reminds me of uh, not a meadow, but the uh, the upside down in Stranger Things. So you see 
how versatile the music is, how versatile the oud is, um, but how versatile the music is itself. And there are there are scales actually all over the world. I mean, um, in gamelan music, for example, that don't use that rigid equal temperament. And there's nothing wrong with equal temperament. You can play Donnelly in 12 keys if you want. Um, and it really it gives us harmonies and this forward driving emotion. But there are other things out there. And when your ears hear them, at least when I, my ears first heard them, um, they, the, it was like something blooming. I want to say a little bit something more about that Hijaz scale that I've talked about. In fact, in a way, this whole series has been sort of a love uh, song to the Hijaz scale. D, E flat, F sharp, G, A, B flat, C, D. Well, do you know that even the Hijaz scale in Arabic music, that E flat is a little bit higher than on a piano, and the F sharp is a little bit lower. Versus. Subtle difference. You can really hear it on that F sharp. Isn't that amazing? You didn't know reality was so fluid, did you? But it is. And I like when things remind me of that. Speaking of reminding. You know, people sometimes ask, why is a Jewish boy like you playing the Arabic music? And I used to say, well, you know, I'm all for for peaceful relationships be between Jews and Arabs and, and working on that problem and, and you know, and, and this is one, one way into music, the universal language and all that. I do believe that, but the truth is I realized, I was just sort of saying that, and actually I just love the music. I love it. Um, pure, pure, just fire for fire. That's, that's why I play it, right? Um, however, however, when you fall in love with a kind of music, uh, for example, Arabic music, I started listening and I started learning because that's what you've got to do. You've got to put it in a context, right? You've got to see the historical context. Um, you've got to see if you can get a translation of the lyrics or even learn a little bit of the language. And then the great thing is I started playing with uh, with Arabic people, Arab, other Arabic musicians, right? Um, and and so then, then you start to build relationships right? Uh, and, and then you can talk about the hard things after a while, after these foundations of friendships and relationships are built through music. So I think my final metaphor for, uh, for all of this, you know, grids and meadows and everything, uh, I would say that for me, the oud has been a bridge. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I'm Eric Stern. This is Jukebox Radio. And um, and I'll be gone next week. I'll be gone snowshoeing. Uh, that's right. I'm taking a week off. Me and the family. Uh, my wife and kid are going to put on uh, things that gear that you wax up and, and slide around on the snow. And God knows what could happen to you. I'll just be walking around in the snow. So, um, But I will see you after that for Jukebox Radio for the, the next episode. I think it might be Stride Piano. So here I'll, you'll see how much in love I am actually with this musical map. So uh, until then, well, just just have, have a lovely, lovely holiday um, and, and enjoy some music. Listen to the, um, some of the links. Check me out uh, on Oregon Music News because that's carrying this series as well. But really, just uh, just just go listen to some oud music, listen to some um kultsum, broaden your ears, and be a bridge. I'm Eric Stern. This is Jukebox Radio. <laughs>